Lean is an important value chain for going for a sustainable society. It can be used to replace fossil-based products. Lignocity is a unique test bed in the world. We can produce uh, lignin from uh, different uh, black liquors that is, comes from different paper mills. And uh, we can scale it up from uh, only a few grams up to tons. Lignin in one sentence is the glue in wood, but you can extract it uh, in the process we do here in Lignocity. And instead of burning it in the paper mill, we can uh, create a higher value with uh, evaluating the lignin into uh, different products. It can be in asphalt, it can be made carbon fiber out of it, and it can be made bioplastic and many other applications. Uh, the test bed is located uh, as a neighbor to Nordic paper, where the black liquor come from that we uh, produce lignin out of. Within the test bed Lignin City, you also get contact with the, the research institute RISE. We can help companies that are interested in the lignin value chains, from the raw material lignin to the end products. So here at RISE we have resources to work on the lignin that produce in Lignocity. The, we work on the different applications such as uh, thermoplastics, thermosets, chemicals and fuels from lignin. So in this lab, we make lignin-based carbon fiber and use it in different applications. For example, in this car, you can see the roof is a lignin-based carbon fiber composite that the carbon fiber were made here in this lab. Also, this car has a lithium-ion battery that in this battery also we use the lignin-based carbon fibers. In Lignocity, we want to uh, welcome uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises uh, that we can help to take the leap from idea to market in small and safe steps, which reduces uh, the risk to scale up. Our time here at RICE was, was a key in our development. It helped us to have our products ready for the market, and now we are moving on and, and starting our demo plant unit outside Stockholm, where we will produce 2,000 tons per year of our material right now. This is one of the end application of what we do at Rencom, using lignin to make plastic bags. The name of it is Renol, and we can mix it with bioplastics or fossil-based plastics, depending on the applications you want to do with it. Region Värmland is strong in bioeconomy, partly because we have a lot of forest here and the skills in how to create different applications out of the wood, but we want to grow even better and bigger on the bioeconomy, and lignin is one track. Here we have space for new possibilities with conference room, facilities and the laboratory. Hi and welcome to today's webinar with Lignocity. I hope you enjoyed the film and if you want to see it again, you can find it both on the webpage from Lignocity and YouTube. And um, today we are very happy to present uh, Daniela Arango Ospina from Lignopure in Germany to listen to what they are doing with lignin. And also we look forward to get a sneak peek presented by a bulldozer on the digital tour we have created from Lignocity. So you will be able to see how it looks like in our plant before we leave it for today. And this is the last webinar for this year. And after Christmas and New Year, we will present the next webinar, the 20th of January. And to have the best experience of uh, today's uh, webinar, we uh, uh, ask you to use the speaker's view and uh, you choose the different views on your upper right corner. So you can play around with the different views to see the different, but speaker's view is recommended. And also to keep your microphone muted uh, when the speakers are talking. If you have questions to us uh, during the webinar, please write them in the chat. You find that on the bottom of the screen. And there is also a reactions button that you can play around with if you want to share something during the webinar. 
Um, I am Maria Almholt, working as project manager at the testbed Ligno City. And uh, currently we run a project called Ligno Innovation with the partners uh, Christenham Municipality and Paper Province. Uh, and the project is financed also by the EU Structural Funds Programme and Vidion Bermland. So we are very happy to be able to present those uh, webinar thanks to that. And if you have any input to uh, upcoming topics you would like to see in a webinar, let us know. And uh, any questions, please write them in the chat. Uh, hi, Daniela, how are you? Maria, great, all right. Thank you so much for this invitation. And thank you for taking it on. We are so excited to hear about uh, your company and, and yourself. And uh, um, yeah, really what, what you do with, with the Lignin. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> let's hear about it. I'm gonna share my screen now. Um, Very good because we did prepare a little presentation. And yeah, here and, we and are. Also remind everyone that we are recording today's event and also the earlier webinars you can see on the Ligna City webpage. Uh, so in case you want to see it again or share it with your friends, it will be possible later on. Now we see your presentation perfectly fine, Daniela. So all yours. Right. Thank you, I'll proceed. Well, yeah, first of all, thank you to Ligna City for this kind invitation. We are very happy to be closing this year. Uh, my name is Daniela Arango, as she already mentioned, and I'm the head of regulatory affairs at Ligna Pure, uh, where we process Ligna for high quality applications. We wanted to focus the talk today around the journey we've been through to make Ligna a functional ingredient. And to start with that, we wanted to dig deeper into what were the facts that caught our attention about lignin and why we thought, even though it is currently utilized for certain big volume applications, such as filler in cements and other uh, carbon fiber applications, um, how could we take lignin and why to such a market like cosmetics? Uh, we identified two branches. First, sustainability, and second, lignin functionalities, which is actually our main focus. So sustainability, we all know a bit about lignin, I'm assuming. And the three main facts that we identify here is that of course it's a renewable source, which is appealing for these manufacturers. Uh, the fact that we have lignin being the second most abundant biopolymer on earth, um, but also the fact that we don't have to plant new, core, new crops or plantation fields to extract this lignin, uh, but it's actually coming from side stream uh, or residues produced uh, from biorefineries or pulp and paper industries. But not every pulp and paper or not every biorefinery could fit in here because we need to, uh, to stay in certain standards. And the third one will be the fact that we are extracting lignin or in the market lignin is being extracted from non-edible biomasses, whether uh, we're talking about woods or we're talking about straws or the non-edible parts of different types of crops. Um, yeah, the second branch, as I mentioned, and the most important for us is the functionalities. The fact that lignin is not only bio-based and a nice to have in terms of talking about sustainability or possibly greenwashing, but that we actually can provide real functionalities and nice properties to a final product. Uh, from our scouting, we identified the three main that make the most sense uh, for lignin to be a game changer in the cosmetic industry. Why? Because there are many ingredients that are getting out of the market compared to the low novel ingredients that are coming into the market to tackle these functionalities. And I'm talking about antioxidation, both protecting the formulation, but also protecting the skin of the users. Second, UV protection in terms of the UV filters, but also boosters that will help us have more sustainable and nicer formulations. And third, antimicrobial activity that could be viewed as a nice uh, to have an increase or a boost in the current preservative boosters. And as you know, all of these functionalities are currently delivered by ingredients that might be not so good with the environment, but also health. And therefore we saw Lignin as a nice player here. Well, where is then actually the value that we can provide? What we see is, okay, we identify nice functionalities in Lignin as a biopolymer present in plants and in nature. And there it is, pro it is for sure behaving very well. But can we ensure that these functionalities will behave as well 
in a final product, then we see our value addition here, enabling the transferring of these lignin functionalities from the biomass, from the biopolymer as it is, to express uh, these nice activities once it is part of a finished formulation. And yeah, to understand a little bit how we do it, where is lignopure taking place in this value chain? We see ourselves as a bridge or our in, as an enabler between the lignin producers and the B2C manufacturers. So let's go through this chain. First, we have lignin being available in diverse kinds of biomasses and also different type of players or lignin producers extracting the lignin, utilizing diverse processes. This, of course, will give us a variety of lignin fractions coming from different biomasses and different processes. Therefore, the first thing for us to do is to scout the right type of lignins that could, get, uh, that could complain um, with the requirements of a final, let's say, cosmetic or life science manufacturer. Then what we do at Lignopure is to have this raw lignin and process it such that we have the particles that are compatible with diverse kinds of formulations. And for that, the last step is for us to do in-house and also co-development around formulations that would allow us to ensure that the ingredient, the powder, the fine microparticles that we are producing will be performing well in a final product. So let's dig a little bit deeper in how our development pipeline looks like. First of all, before this all started as a startup, um, we actually had Joanna and Vinke, my two co-founders, working with different kinds of lignin, and they started to realize how differently they will behave in our process. So we have gathered a lot of knowledge around the behavior, characteristics, and functionalities of different kinds of lignins. And now we are in contact with different potential suppliers. And the first questions we start asking, or the first characterizations we do, are around the composition, about the odor, and more technical ones relating to reliability of the supply. Um, is this a lignin that we're gonna be having in the next years or is the pilot or the scale at which they are at the moment enough for us to supply the demand uh, that the cosmetic industry has? And second, is there already a batch to batch quality? Can we uh, do analysis or do they have already certain reports that allow us to guarantee a batch to batch quality uh, in the market scale. Once we have consolidated or talk around these, these, these main concerns, we start exploring what are the presence of the prohibited or restricted substances that will definitely take us out of the market. So this is of course based on relevant regulations when it comes to the cosmetic market and also further markets that could come later such as food and pharma applications. And then our, let's say, our first pivotal uh, test will be skin irritation and sensitization of these raw lignins. Once we have passed uh, these two steps, then it comes our input. Then we have this raw lignin, which as you can see here, is mainly provided as a filter cave, but we also have encountered different kinds of feeds. We start working in the pretreatment. We have established a trend of pretreatment that prepares the feed for our particle uh, engineering process. So we have to adapt these for different kinds of lignin fractions. And we have done this already uh, with several ones that we have tried from our current partners. Once we have the feed ready, then we fine tune the parameters on our particle engineering process to produce the microparticles that we know uh, are required for the formulations. And how do we know that? Because we already have input also from like potential customers, but also our market research in terms of formulators or what manufacturers require. So once we have the microparticles, um, we can test functionality and we can test efficacy. Efficacy is actually just another way to say how the functionality or the activity of certain ingredient is behaving or expressing as part of a formulation because it really doesn't matter if we can achieve or we know that there are functionalities, but we cannot guarantee that they're expressing or they are actually exhibiting this capacity as part of a final product. So once we pass all this stage, we have our lignobase fraction. Just to wrap up a little bit, then we're basing our value or our 
transformation into two things. First, the know-how and our tech platform, such that we can achieve different product qualities. As an example, you can see here from one type of lignin, feeding or setting different parameters, both in the pretreatment and in the process, we can target particular or different um, particles morphology, giving us a variety of finished products. And the other way around works as well. With our single process, we can actually treat a diversity of initial raw materials. Why? Because as I mentioned, um, having different biomasses and extraction process actually give us a variety of finer target functions. So here we will have a variety of finished products. This case not based in changing our process, but changing the initial biomass. With all of this, we are, have managed uh, to put together a sound uh, portfolio of products uh, targeting the cosmetic and care applications industry. And so I will present to you Lignobase. So Lignobase is our flagship, is basically the lignin as a microparticle in a fine tuned size, shape, and porosity, which is already ready to be utilized um, as an ingredient offering functionalities. And what are the functionalities that we are targeting for our diverse kinds of, of lignobase? First, as an SPF booster, second, as an antioxidant, preservative booster, and also second removal. And there are other characteristics, sensorial and organoleptic characteristics of the lignin that we want to exploit, such as the color, the fact that it's an emulsion stabilizer in many cases, and it can also act as a filler. Of course, this is not enough value for us to sell the lignin, therefore we see it as an added uh, feature rather than a functionality. And we can offer it in diverse specifications, as I already mentioned, once we fine tune the parameters uh, of the particle engineering process. And of course, what is nice about this is that the composition is 100% lignin fraction. Why don't I say 100% lignin? Because we all know that wouldn't be possible. All the fractions contain a certain amount of cellulose and yeah, maybe some ashes, but we managed to work with those that have a reduced number of these other like materials. And then we have lignoperls. So lignoperls is actually taking lignobase one step farther. Uh, we don't see ourselves as manufacturers or as formulators of, of finished cosmetic products. However, we did want to go a little bit farther with these products. So lignoperls are uh, spherical, microbeads composed 100% by lignobase and another biocopolymer. Um, therefore, we obtain nice spherical beads, uh, which targets smooth filling, mechanical cleaning, the skin dead, uh, dead skin removal, I'm sorry, activity ingredients can be also carried to, to these nice particles. And these are a nice alternative or feasible alternative to yeah, plastic-based, cellulose-based, or only these shell-based um, alternatives that we have in the market uh, that cannot really guarantee that you have a smooth round spherical um, particles and therefore are not so smooth with the, with the skin. Uh, we can provide them in a range of particle sizes and depending on the drying process that we utilize, we can also have a diversity of porosities. And yeah. Since we're sharing of the lead was our journey, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of our product R&D and how is this actually looking like. First of all, as I mentioned, uh, we're focusing on formulations to be sure that the ingredient, the microparticles that we are providing are integrating correctly and expressing the functionalities. And right now we're testing these two. Uh, let me take my, la my laser here. First, we have mineral sunscreen and a functional cream where we are testing these activities, uh, UV protection, antioxidant, and my antimicrobial. And in the pipeline, we have come in next chemical conventional sunscreen. What we do first then is characterize the activity of the finished ingredient. That is the lignin that has already been transformed in through the microparticles in the size that our customers have asked us for. 
and we perform different activity tests to select the right lignans from this pool, for example. And then we check for UV absorption spectrum to see if we can actually claim a broad spectrum here, critical wavelength and photostability. Um, later, regarding the antioxidant capacity, we have this test, the DPPH radical scavenging test. And we, of course, we also have to perform stability analysis to see how the microbiological charge of this ingredient is behaving. And we have had positive results from three of these uh, lignins. Here, this is just an example of one of our yeah, projects. So we identified broad spectrum photostability and burn antioxidant activity versus a commercial ingredient. In this case, we use Trollox. And yeah, we found that these lignins comply with the requirements for the microbiological charge. Then once we prove uh, that these lignins as a fine powder are interested for us, interesting for us, then we can move to formulations. Once we have this lignin incorporated in different concentrations, because of course we're also testing uh, what will be the required concentration for the lignin to exhibit certain functionalities, we move to create uh, different finished products, such as this, the SPF mineral. So this is a zone blocker based on physical UV filters and a functional cream, which is only there to provide antioxidant and moisturizing effects. Once the ligand is stably incorporated in these um, formulations, we can perform what is called efficacy tests. So efficacy means only how the functionality of certain ingredient is being exhibited or is present or not in certain formulation. Uh, for this, we started with the SPF in vitro. So we're testing um, in a control environment, the increased absorbance of a formulation, a control formulation versus the ones that include the different kinds of lignin. Then we repeated the DPPH radical scavenging, but not for the powder, but for the solution of these formulations. And also a challenge test uh, for you, for those of you not familiar with chemical, with yeah, microbiological concepts, then the challenge test is basically challenging the preservation system of a formula. So if I incorporate certain microbiomes uh, into the formula, how much can it resist before they can proliferate and grow? And yeah, so we have had nice results. Over 50% of the SPF boosting in formulation, and this has already allowed us uh, to know that it's worth it to move into the in vivo analysis uh, regarding the antioxidant activity. Then we identified an increased antioxidant activity compared to the base formulation, so the one not including lignin but including other additives. And mm, yeah, what we found is that we required a lower 50% inhibition concentration. And regarding the challenge test, so that one related to the microbiological charge, um, we have not finished there, but since we're presenting today, uh, we have preliminary results, so the midterm results, and we do see a uh, boost preservation effect from one of these lignins against one key type of microorganism that normally grows in these kind of formulations. So all of this was about okay, the technical development of a product. However, we know that that is not enough to go to the market. So we have a nice bio-based product. We've shown that it has activity and that our process allows us uh, to transfer these activities to a final formulation. But in order to be market ready, we need to tackle regulatory affairs. So the lignin selection was not only important to guarantee that we have a nice product, but that we comply with the regulatory affairs uh, or regula regulations um, that are valid for us. And therefore, this includes uh, physical chemical characterization and toxicological and microbiological assessments that are all reported. Functionalities and formulations, as I mentioned, this covers stability tests in mock-ups formulations and yeah, functionality assessment, and what is more importantly, formulation strategies. So as, as I tried to uh, explain, we are not formulators on our own but we want to be closer to the final customer and understand where their pains and needs are such that we know that the product that we're producing is gonna match their necessities. And finally, we're actually at the stage of drafting our ingredient dossier and technical documents such that the client can, uh, yeah, with confidence 
include them in their portfolio. And just to share with you, we have Lignova is registered as a trademark and also it has its own inky name, which is very important for cosmetic manufacturers to be able to incorporate them into their final products. Just a sneak peek uh, in our R&D pipeline. So what's coming up in the next year. Um, so I presented to you micro pearl, our Ligno pearls, our micro beads. And what we're gonna do next is to scale up the process. And we have a new type of particle coming up. So I was talking about spheres, micro-sized particles, and then we're working on a couple that will have higher boost effects. And let's see who can guess what that is, but you will be learning more next year. Okay, we've been talking about development around the product. Now let's take a look in the company. So we've been growing. Um, we were founded two years ago. We received our first boost investment uh, from the Hamburg city, and then we received our seed investment. Uh, from this morning, we have managed to have our plant, our production plant, which will ramp up to 90 tons per year. And actually, we will be commissioning next week. So we're going to be pretty busy. And as you can see here, these are three smiling faces with uh, our new keys to the hole, which will be the first GMP compliant lignin processing plant uh, in the European Union. So based on these improvements and growth, uh, we're getting ready to open our next uh, financial activities next year. Uh, so stay tuned if you are interested. And how did we manage to build all this? Well, we know that the secret formula for this is diversity in know-how and also people, which is kind of funny because now you can see that it's eight women versus two men, but we are hoping that we'll get more diverse once we grow up more. So you can see us here, the three co-founders, uh, Joanna Hill tackling the business development, Vinka Reynolds working with the process engineer, and me uh, tackling a little bit of regulatory and product development. And yes, you can have here the rest of the team working in the development and application platform, our sales, internal R&D, and the operations and quality of our plant. I hope this presentation was interesting for you. Uh, so I really want to invite you to join us. Are you a LinkedIn producer? Well, we will be great. it will be great if you can uh, become one of our partners and our suppliers of raw material if you're interested in taking your LinkedIn to a higher value. Or are you a cosmetic manufacturer, formulator, or just interested in ingredients distribution? So it will be cool that you can include Lignobase to refresh your old formulations or to develop brand new uh, formulations with our product. Thank you very much. And yeah, let's open up the discussion. Thank you, Daniela. Very inspiring to, to hear your presentation. Cool things you're doing. You. Uh, when when yes. did you start at all? Excuse me, can you repeat, please? When, when did the company start? When was it funded? Well, we were funded at the end of 2019, and then we received what is called in the ramp up. So that's like a proof of concept grant offered by the city of Hamburg. Cool. And I read from the chat here. Now it's a, it's a long, so, so listen carefully. <laughs> what is about the color? Is it a problem for the industry? I can see the utilization of these creams in some kind of makeup, but seems difficult for the application in some creams, normally quite white creams. The market size could be very different depending on the final product. That's absolutely true. And yeah, that was one of, let's say, concerns at the beginning. Um, but it's very nice that you mentioned this trend. So, but it's not only in decorative cosmetics, so those that are used as foundations to cover or mimic the skin color. But even in sunscreens, even like very white people are concerned about the white cast or this whitening effect that you get when you get into water. Uh, because one thing is to have white skin color, but white wall color is different, right? And not everyone is very keen to, to wear uh, sunscreen due to this effect. So now we're seeing in the transformation through these two years, how those, uh, let's say, cosmetic or skincare manufacturers uh, were concerned so much about the, the color, now we're getting more open about it. And also lignin color can be balanced out with the right combination of UV filters and ingredients. So we also see an opportunity that is growing in this, in this section. Very good. Uh, you see the chat also, Daniela, and we have yes. uh, 
another question. Uh, regarding regulatory affairs, can you talk about a little more of safety, cytotoxicity, genotoxicity of lignin? Yes. Um, okay, so there is a lot of work uh, to be done there. We have nice background in terms of what, it ha what has been done already with lignin. So public information you will find about how lignin is not considered uh, cytotoxic or not bioaccumulating. Mm, and right now we are not we are not part of the rich regulation, so what we are what is called rich exempted. Uh, of course, we have to be checking all the time uh, if this status uh, is changing. Very good. And uh, how lignin can be a good UV blocker? Lignin absorbs around 280 nm. There are three UV regions and named as UVA 400 to mm -hmm. 15 nm, UVB 350 to 280 nm, UVC 280 to 100 nm. UVC is mostly absorbed by ozone layer, but not UVA and UVB. So all UV blockers must absorb uh, this. How lignin will work here, especially for UVA, unless you do some modification? Did you compare it with commercial products? Of course, of course. The comparison is, is against uh, uh, a blind that is a commercial product or a base formulation not including lignin. And well, we have different critical wavelengths than the ones you, you, you are giving us here. And of course, this varies from the type of lignin fraction uh, that we are evaluating. Um, but just to answer the last part, we are not doing any kind of chemical modification. We actually want, want to harness the value and the properties of the lignin as a, as a big polymer. And next question might be that you don't want to answer, but how do you fractionate lignin to different lignin functionality? How do you keep the color of lignin product in the makeup products? Okay, we are not fractionating lignin in, in, in any sense, uh, but we are utilizing different lignin fractions. Uh, so different lignin fractions coming from different biobase. And once they have gone through the particle processing, so we, once we have different particle sizes, you observe different functionalities, at least highlighted functionalities. Let's say in general terms, the lignin itself have a lot of functionalities uh, that you can argue are present, but how many of them are, or which ones are actually being exhibited is what is changing. Very good. And uh... Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, curious on how you check the photostability of the ingredient and the SPF of the final formulation. Can you develop a little bit of this, please? Yes. Uh, well, uh, this is also public information. So photostability analysis, you basically put uh, your ingredient and your formulation under stress uh, and so radiation from different wavelengths. And then, yes, that's exactly what you do. You check uh, the SPF performance before and after the radiation and also their other type of characteristics such as color and so on. Very good. And also interesting is uh, what lignins have you tried? What kind of lignin do you use? Is craft suitable to your process? Uh, sadly, no, at least not the craft that we try or that we evaluated at the beginning. And we're focusing on biorefinery type of, of lignin, so different kinds. And is it needed any special packaging? Special, like, yeah, like so challenging, no, but we definitely need something uh, that help us maintain the right amount of moisture. So once we have the microparticles, we have very low uh, moisture content that we need to ensure uh, and uh, protect from specific temperature changes. Uh, we're still working in the stability test and it's coming to do the stabilities in different types of packaging, uh, but it's not something that is coming out so differently from what is already available. And a last one is, uh, uh, do you able to convert lignin to those products from non-wood? And that Correct. Yes, we are working with wood, hardwood, softwoods, and also different animal plants. Good. And one more question. Uh, according to your INCI name, you are limited to the use of lignins from Picea and Pinus. Do you also plan to use lignins from other raw materials? This is a very good question because we actually were given our inky name just last month and they are updating this description. So what you see there, Pisa and Pinus is going to change 
and it's going to be broadened. So stay tuned. And if you can check the closing database, so the ingredient uh, database from the European Union, you'll see in the next months that it's going to reflect the variety of lignins that we are able to, to work with. Thank you so much, Daniela, for your presentation first and for answering all kind of questions coming in. Uh, right. There will be uh, even more coming in. And uh, if you don't mind, please write your email address in the chat as well if someone wants to can get contact directly with you. For sure, that would be very great. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, thanks again, Daniela. And uh, we are now going to listen to Eva from Bulldozer, and she will go. She will show us how far the work has come with the digitization of Lignus City. Uh, we have a digital tour uh, prepared, at least a taste of it. Hi, Eva, how are you? Yes, hello, hello, I'm fine, thank you. Interesting talk there, <clears throat> Daniela. Uh, yes, we have a, a, a big project going on together with you. Uh, it's really uh, it's really interesting and it's starting starting to um all the bits and pieces are starting to come uh, come together but we still have a uh, still have some quite time before it's uh, all done but hopefully everything will be out and running uh, after in january after uh, christmas and new year um but we will show you uh, quick demo of our work in progress project together uh, with both Rice and Table Province. And uh, this project will hopefully give the users a full experience of Ligno City, uh, a greater understanding of Lignin, uh, what can be made from it, uh, the ongoing science, and also how the test bed can be used. Uh, so I will share my screen here and you will go directly into the woods. Cool. Where everything starts. Yes. Can you see it? Not yet. No, not quite yet. Yep. No, no. No, something is happening. Here. There we are. Right in the yeah. front. So it's actually a, a, a 360 um, a 360 video that you can browse through and you can go into uh, five different rooms or stops if you like uh, and everyone starts in the woods and then you can also explore the leaning plant you can check out the test bed visit the rice lab or let's meet in the conference room so uh, this uh, this room or whatever you call it is uh, the most finished one yet so here you can actually see get a picture of how all the rooms will be later on uh, so here uh, you see the first hotspot, as we call them. Uh, you click on that and you can get a um, short information about what is Lingning. Ling. Uh, you get an illustration about, about it and also you can read just a short text on uh, actually what it is. So you get a, a good understanding for that. Then you can look around here on this uh, nice uh, forest and here you find something about uh, thermal plastic and then we will get a, a picture of what you can actually make by leaning and here you can hear just <laughs> Cool. We 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 lost the volume of you, Eva. I, I can still hear you and the and the film. But perhaps we need to turn turn up the volume a little. Everyone listening. For example, here we have a cellulose and lignin fiber, which is 
So there will be a variety of uh, this kind of information hotspots and field hotspots. Uh, and this is how it will look like in all the different groups. But let's do it a little bit. Could you check your microphone, Eva? We heard, we heard you very well before, but now we hear you. Here we will learn about uh, how to actually make remains and the process that we that we go through. And also, um, there will be one hotspot about tailored labeling of your choice, uh, and also uh, the possibility to order linking to the link direct to the to the website. But here also we will have the possibility to walk around in the map and um, take a tour. Here you can either choose to walk upstairs, uh, walk uh, upstairs, or you can go down here. And also here, I will soon show you there will um, there will be a technical hotspots uh, on every step, almost I think. Uh, and today we can look at one here. So here you can have uh, direct information about this tank um, and also uh, so that you can read about the capacity and uh, good things to know about that thing. And here you have, have one too. So you have, to, uh, you have to be curious when you look around here because you can look even, oh, oh, how, does, uh, how does it look up into the field? Yeah, and here we also have technical facts. So these information hotspots they will be placed all around the map when you walk. You walk through it. And here you can choose to both go back there or maybe you get you get lost. And then I don't want to go back. I want to go here. Yeah, up the stairs. Have you been here? Now you get the tour. Here you can watch out, watch out these guys in the control room or over here. Curiosity, information of what? Yeah, you get the you get the deal. So you can walk around and you can get back actually to the place where you started. So it it uh, really is a tour. Uh, on the next stop, you will be able to uh, check out the test bed here of Lingo City. Uh, on this uh, Lingo Boost machine, we will have a short film about uh, how to use that one. And there will also be um, uh, information about how you can use the test bed and what a test bed actually is and how you can use Lingo City. Uh, so here will be very uh, Information about informational about the uh, Lingo City test bed. And here we take a quick visit to the uh, Rice Lab in Stockholm. And here you will get to learn more about the uh, about the research and developments uh, that are going on right now. And uh, the the scientists here actually will talk more about the, their specific. Uh, what they're actually working on, and uh, you will get an insight in the in the lab and 
all the research that's been done. And here in the conference room, there will be uh, hot spots about uh, exam work and uh, also uh, the opportunities in the university. Uh, we will talk about uh, where it actually, actually are, is located. It's a very attractive spot in Sweden with uh, close access to both Oslo, Gothenburg, and Stockholm. And, uh, different kind of uh, yeah thoughts about work. What do you think, Ray? Is that a summary on the project? I think it's a good summer. We have some issues with the sound. So I'm not sure that Eva hears me at all since the sharing. And I yep. know us listening. Now Eva can hear me and I hope everyone else can hear me. We 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 lost you the sound a bit when no. we started to share the film. So we we have heard you, but no. on, very, on very low volume. So so uh, everyone have needed to turn it up. But uh, uh, we, Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now we actually hear because I, I just wanted you to hear the and we wanted I wanted you to hear the, the the film, so you didn't hear me at all almost. Oh, that's embarrassing. So sorry. No, no, no worries. We 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 could see because that's what it's most about. And then uh, when this is finalized, there will be more text included, and uh, you can interact yourself and move around as you like. But we have seen the three sixty views. So everyone has now digital been in Ignosette, uh, which is cool. So this is what we want to uh, achieve and, and to be more uh, accessible wherever you are in the world with or without a pandemic that allows us to travel or not. But this is uh, a way to communicate over all borders. So I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, you are helping us with this, Eva. And apologize to everyone for the sound, but we, we have seen <laughs> and th there will come more. And when all is published, everyone will be able to uh, check for themselves. And is it anyone that wants dare to use the reactions at the bottom? I, I, I add an applause uh, to Eva and her team for this. And again, thank you to Daniela for all the uh, interesting uh, uh, stuff you do with uh, LinkedIn. And thank you to everyone asking questions also. And is there anyone uh, that further wants to know something? Please take the chance. Uh, hi from Ragu. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Thumbs up. Uh, thank you for that. And as I said in the beginning, the 20th of January, is our next webinar. And there will be a colleague of mine, David uh, uh, Setan Blombay, uh, is going to talk from RICE and also representant from BASF. So more info will come in due time. And also the recording of this event will be available on the webpage as the previous webinars are. So check those out if you have time uh, to spend uh, during uh, Christmas and uh, the hopefully free days you have. Um, the 3D tour link is not yet available to access, uh, uh, Ragu is asking in the chat. Good question, uh, but it will be available as uh, soon as everything is put together. And uh, it will be early January as, we, as per now. Uh, and we will sure let you all know when it is available. Uh, so if we have no further questions, then I say thank you for today. Uh, thank you, Eva, especially, and Daniela for presenting. And thank you to everyone taking your time to log in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And uh, Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.